Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today I'm going to make a summary and conclusion here to the teaching on the book of Acts. Uh, I've completed the teaching on all 28 chapters and this video will be probably fairly brief just to kind of sum up everything. Now. Uh, in the description box for the playlist, uh, the playlist on this uh, study is titled The Book of Acts, a Verse-by-Verse -verse Commentary. <clears throat> so when you go to my YouTube channel, uh, you click on Playlists, you find that playlist, and you look at the uh, description, uh, I'm going to be sure that in the description section that it has a link to this uh, timeline chart that I, I've referred to many, many times. <clears throat> and I want to review the timeline just uh, in the summary uh, to kind of sum up everything and uh, also uh, recommend a few of my other playlists that are all kind of interconnected on this, on this subject. So let's look at this uh, timeline. The uh, of course, the book of Acts is written by Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he also wrote the, the book of Acts. Uh, he was a physician, a traveling companion to Paul, um, a, uh, uh, also a, uh, a co-worker in Paul's ministry. He also is recognized as a first-class uh, historian because of him recording this uh, history of the church, the, the first 30 years of church history. He did it a, a great detailed uh, historical record of this. And the book of Acts starts off him writing to a friend, and that's why uh, this is a letter, and, and uh, many of the books of the Bible are letters, and we call them epistles. Most people don't think of the the book of Acts as an epistle, but in fact it is. It's another epistle. But uh, he starts off by saying that to his friend that he's writing this down and he's being very meticulous to give you a, a record of all these events. And that uh, all of it's very true. And it's uh, the, that Jesus is our Savior God. This is uh, uh, proven by what he calls many infallible proofs. So... Uh, but this timeline chart here, and by the way, it um, it has the instead of the uh, we we consider the date now in 2016. Uh, I, I don't know how the, uh, uh, the maybe the proper terminology is uh, that by using 2016. We refer to that as A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. And, uh, and before uh, uh, A.D., we had B.C., and we call that before Christ. So this is how most people use the calendar. I, I don't want to say most people, but at least most people I'm familiar with in my lifetime. But there are another way of looking at the the. Uh, historical timeline, and a, I think that's called CE. Um, I'm not that much knowledgeable on that subject, but the reason I'm saying this now is that when you look at this timeline chart, it starts off at 30 AD, and it says uh, the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost. But we know, at least those of us who operate in this BC AD timeline, that uh, the, uh, the church didn't start until 33 AD because there, we had to have the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus, and, and that was 33 AD. But in this timeline, uh, 33 AD as we understand it, on this timeline it would be recorded as 30 AD. But 30 A.D. on this time chart here is really 33 A.D., the way that we, we use time uh, commonly. 
So even though it says 30 AD, uh, we know that it's, I mean, it, it's really 33 AD because of the, uh, the, the fact that uh, it starts off with Pentecost. And Pentecost is, is the time in history where Jesus had ascended, the apostles are sent to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes and indwells them and seals them, and uh, this is the beginning of the church. Um, so that's why you could be confused when you see, wait, what, 30 A.D.? I should, this shouldn't be, this be 33 A.D.? That, that's the reason for it. They're using this, uh, that time reference. But the point you, you can really get from this is that you correspond the, uh, these events and with the book, it says Acts chapter 1 and 2, and it tells you these events, the birth of the church, on the day of Pentecost, Peter's message, 3,000 added to the church, and it says Acts 1 and 2, so that we, chapter 1 and 2, this is the basic content, and this happened 30 AD, but the fact is this didn't really happen until 33 AD. So what I've done with this chart here is I just add three years to all of these dates, and that's what I would recommend that you do. Uh, so, if we do that, we can look through this timeline and see all these uh, these important events. Uh, so we have Pentecost, the beginning of the church. The next really really significant event would be uh, the death of of um, Stephen. Let's find out where that was. That should be about three years after Pentecost. Yeah. So we get to Acts chapter six and seven. It says, uh, demonstrations of power by Stephen, followed by his being called before the Sanhedrin, where he was stoned to death, following his message of judgment on Israel. First martyred uh, believer. Well, so that is 33 AD according to his timeline, but that was really 36 AD when that happened. Um, so now we, we go through the, the, the timeline again, and I see the next really significant event is would be the timeline here says 34 to 37 A.D. So we would change that, say, to 37 to 40 A.D. In that time frame, we got Acts chapter 9 taking place. And so uh, after Pentecost, uh, this would be about seven years six or seven years after Pentecost, and what happens there that's very really significant is the conversion of Paul. Saul of Tarsus, uh, a very religious uh, um, Jew, a Pharisee, um, is selected and given the, the job of rounding up this new sect. They're, they're Jewish people, but they claim that Jesus is the Messiah, and he's supposed to round them up, persecute them, and that's what he does. And then on the road to Damascus, Jesus appears to him, and he is converted, and he becomes the great apostle Paul. So that's happening about six years. So we have after Pentecost. So we have Pentecost. We have three years later, roughly, the uh, uh, martyrdom of Stephen. And then we have about three years later, we have the conversion of Paul. And then the next big event here is the... Uh, Peter preaching to Cornelius, and uh, the uh, the, the uh, uh, first Gentile believers. So that would be ten years after Pentecost. Peter is the first. See, this this is upset these Paul onlyists, the hyper dispensationalists. They want to believe that uh, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. And he was, but he wasn't the first, he wasn't the only. In fact, all of the apostles eventually preached to Gentiles. They were dispersed all over, and they didn't lend themselves to just going to the Jews around the world. They preached to Gentiles. So all the apostles preached to the Gentiles, not just Paul. And, and not only was Paul not the exclusive apostle to the Gentiles, but he wasn't even the first, because here, Peter is the first one preaching to Cornelius and his family, and there you have the first Gentile believers. Not only uh, was he the first to preach to them, but he preached the same message that Paul preached. If you study his sermon to Cornelius, 
He's preaching the death, burial, and, uh, and resurrection of Jesus. He's preaching for the remission of your sins. And he's preaching, believe on, quote, the words, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Exact words that were, uh, what Paul is famous for in Acts 16.31. So we have him the same message being preached much earlier by Peter to Gentiles. And so this is the great event where uh, Gentiles first enter the church, but that's 10 years after Pentecost. And then uh, a lot of things happen, but the next really significant thing is Paul's uh, missionary journeys. Uh, and that happens really 10 years after uh, the first Gentile believers, to about 20 years after uh, the Pentecost, uh, Paul's missionary journeys begin. He has three of them. And then, uh, if you go through this timeline here, oh, it also shows you the, the dates of various books that are written here. Um, it says that about 45 to 50 AD, it's the very first book is... is in the New Testament that's, that's penned is James. And then right after that, the next book is Galatians. And that's very, very significant. Um, there are several other studies I've done that are very uh, related to the book of Acts. And everything I've been teaching in the book of Acts uh, is it's, it's also um, emphasized in these other studies I've done one, and I hope you will go to these playlists and watch all those videos because this is all interconnected. One is uh, shocking facts about uh, Paul and James, or maybe it's shocking facts about James and Paul. And in that study, I show that Paul and James are, are not uh, in agreement. And a lot of people try to justify the book of James and, and f trying to find a way that uh, well, Paul, James is, is uh, he, he and Paul are in a disagreement. It's just, and they find ways of trying to make James make sense. And, and uh, um, they don't want, see, the Lordship salvation, they want to use James uh, to justify works salvation. But if, if you're a grace believer, you don't believe in works salvation. So you have to find some other way of, of explaining away James. So you say, no, he's not teaching works for salvation. And they, they uh, try to rationalize James. But what I show in the playlist, the teaching, shocking facts about James and Paul is, no, we, we cannot somehow uh, uh, try to contort the scriptures and, and make it look like James and Paul are in agreement. They are not in agreement. And in this study that I just completed on Acts, Numerous times we pointed out that uh, uh, there was a great disagreement between Paul and James. In fact, uh, uh, and that not only that, uh, we have the, uh, the playlist I have titled Paul Onlyism Debunked. Uh, and I go in also great detail showing that uh, Paul uh, was not the first apostle of the Gentiles. He was not the only apostle uh, that that Paul was not teaching a new, different gospel than, than Jesus. Uh, there are people that believe that uh, you can only be, get saved from the teaching of Paul. You can't even get saved by the red letters in the Bible, the, the words of Jesus. No, Jesus' teaching can't save you, they say. Uh, Peter's teaching can't save you. John's gospel can't save you. Only Paul's teaching can save you. These are the hyper-dispensationalists, the Paul Onius. So if you encounter these people, I urge you, watch my playlist, uh, Paul Onlyism Debunked. So this study on the book of Acts uh, and Paul Onlyism Debunked uh, and shocking facts about James and Paul, these are all interrelated. And, and then another, another one that I studied that I completed this last year was early church history. And uh, in that study, I, I show the history of the early church, uh, uh, not going through the book of Acts as I did just here in this study, but uh, looking at all the scriptures and history, the historical records. And we find that uh, it's, it's certainly easily provable that uh, 
in the, the beginning of the church, it was only Jews. And not only was it only Jews, but the Jews believed that and then, no, Gentiles are not, never going to be part of this. Are you crazy? We don't even associate with Gentiles. There was great prejudice against Gentiles. They wouldn't associate with a Gentile. And for they, they, they thought, no, not only can Gentiles not be in this, but they'll never be in this. That was the attitude. Uh, that had to be corrected. And that started with Peter being sent to preach to Cornelius. Uh, and then the other error uh, that is the history of the beginning of the church was the thinking that, that uh, yeah, Jesus is our Messiah. He's our Savior. Uh, but um, uh, you're not saved by simply believing in Jesus. You've got to believe in Jesus and get circumcised and follow the dietary laws, follow the, all the laws of Moses. You've got to have temple worship and you've got to have animal sacrifices. But all these things are uh, were taught in the scriptures, uh, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Galatians, and, and in this argument that we just went through and throughout the book of Acts, we're taught that, wait a second, uh, not only should you not uh, require the Gentiles to do these things, and they, James and the Jerusalem church made a compromise with, with Peter, and, 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 and the Gentiles and said, okay, they don't have to do all the th stuff that we have to do. But as Gentiles, they don't have to do all that. But at least don't strangle, eat strangled meat and fornicate, you know. So they still had to have some kind of legalism in, imposed upon these Gentile believers. But they did say, but however, this all still applies to the Jews. The Jews still have to follow all the laws of Moses or you can't be saved in Acts chapter 15 verse 1, we see this: these people coming from Judea and trying to tell Paul's uh, uh, disciples that uh, you, well, wait a second, you can't save simply by believing in Jesus. You can't be saved unless you're circumcised. So uh, this is something that uh, at the beginning of the church they were wrong, and over this uh, first 30 year history, this argument took place. The, and finally, uh, they got it right, uh, thanks in, uh, in a great part to Paul for standing up for this. And his, see, Jesus said, believe on me and you're going to be saved. The Gospel of John just says, believe on Jesus. 99 times it says, believe on Jesus, you're going to be saved. Uh, it doesn't say anything else is required. And uh, Peter preached that message, the same thing. Uh, all of Peter's sermons in the book of Acts, when you read them carefully, you see he's not talking about following any, any uh, laws uh, of Moses. He s simply says, Jesus is the promised Messiah. He died for our sins. He raised from the dead. Believe on him and you'll be saved. That's the content of Peter's message, the same as Paul's. But Paul, uh, every time he went to a new city and started a new church, and he corresponded with them, and then he find out that the people from Judea, the people from Jerusalem, the quote men from James, that he uses that term in the in the book of Galatians, that these people are being coming up from Jerusalem. They believe that you've got to follow Judaism and believe in Jesus, and they're infecting all of Paul's churches. And in the book of Galatians, he says it's another gospel. And uh, he says even if a, an angel preaches a different gospel, uh, then uh, they're to be rejected. And, and so the book of Galatians is uh, all about uh, do not uh, uh, nullify the grace of God by adding any works to this. So... Um, that's, and, and then, so then uh, we get through this timeline here, getting back to it. You have uh, Paul's missionary journeys, uh, and then you have his uh, going back to Jerusalem and having this big scene in Jerusalem where Paul is uh, um, uh, told, commanded by James, go in the temple and do this ritual ceremony because uh, everybody is, is saying that you're teaching people to not follow the laws of Moses, uh, and that, um, you know, so uh, he, he, Paul 
submits to James and does this. That's a shocking thing to me that I've never understood. But maybe it's because Paul says uh, he learned to do be all things to all men to try to win people to Christ. So um, he, Paul certainly stood up against Peter uh, when, when Peter uh, received the men from James and Peter left the Gentile table that he normally ate at, eating Gentile food, no longer following the, the Jewish uh, dietary laws. That was his custom then. But when the men from James came, he joined them at the, uh, the, uh, the other table, eating with only the Jews, disassociating himself with the Gentile believers, and following the Jewish dietary laws, eating kosher. And Paul condemned and rebuked Peter for that hypocrisy. And he said that not only, not only Peter, but even, I think, Barnabas, too, did that. So, uh, Paul stood up to, the, to, to Peter regarding that, so it's surprising to me that he submitted to James and went into the temple and did this ritual, but when he did that, all these Jewish people confronted Paul because of Paul's teachings about uh, uh, Judaism not being valid any longer, and, and so they wanted to kill him, and then he's arrested uh, for his protection, and he's taken to these uh, to uh, Felix, and then uh, to Fest, uh, Festus, and then Felix, and, and then King Agrippa, and then finally off to Rome, and he's waiting for two years here, there in Rome for his trial, and that's how the Book of Acts ends. So um, the point of this summary, though, is to emphasize these points, that the church was wrong for a considerable period of time. Uh, they were wrong in thinking that uh, Jesus came only to save the Jews, only for Israel. That had to be corrected. And uh, as I said, it was God chose Peter to be the first one to preach to the Gentiles. He preached to Cornelius. And that was six years after Pentecost. So for six years, I'm sorry, that was, no, that was 10 years after Pentecost. Uh, the six years was uh, how many years it took before Paul became a believer. So for the first 10 years of the church, Gentiles were absolutely excluded. Uh, and then for all of these 30 year history, you have uh, a sect of the Jews that believed in, in Jesus but they didn't believe in him entirely. They believed that Moses' laws had to still be applied, that it was a combination of faith and work, and that's how we get the book of James. So the book of James was written first, it says 45 to 50 AD. The book of Galatians was written 49 to 50 AD, and that's why I say in shocking facts about James and Paul, uh, using this timeline to show that, look, what James was teaching about uh, uh, believing in Jesus and, and uh, uh, following the law, Paul wrote his book of Galatians as an answer to re refute the teachings of James and the Jerusalem church. But this took a long time, and this first 30 years of church history was uh, so important. That's why this book of Acts, this teaching, I'm so excited about it. I, I just I hope that you watch the entire study. But I hope you'll watch it all in context so you really get to uh, understand it all. Watch my playlist, Early Church History. Watch my playlist, Shocking Facts About James and Paul. Uh, watch my playlist, Paul Only Isn't Debunked. Watch my playlist, uh, The Book of Acts, a verse by verse commentary. And all of these things are all interconnected, really proving this, these uh, same points that I just uh, reviewed. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you will make some comments. I'll be very interested in your comments. And uh, what I do next, I'm a little undecided. I was going to go on and continue through the uh, scriptures with Romans and all the way through the epistles. I might do that, but I'm leaning more now towards uh, doing a, a live uh, Q&A series where we'll have live hangouts and just answer any random questions that anybody has friend or foe, taking on all the questions. So I think I might do that. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.